Okay, let's get into the real meat of thermochemistry, and this is all centers around Hess's law. Hess's law states that the sum of the enthalpies of a series of reactions is equal to the enthalpy for the overall reaction. Okay, so what this means is chemical reactions no longer have to occur in one step. In fact, many chemical reactions do not occur in one step. I'll give you a for instance. Okay, this reaction does not occur. Okay, because carbon monoxide is an unstable molecule. So if carbon reacts with oxygen, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to produce carbon dioxide. But what we can do is we can react the carbon dioxide with oxygen, something else and then form more carbon monoxide. So you could do, instead of having this reaction, we might have something like this. This is just a for instance. Okay, I know it doesn't balance out. Um, and we could have carbon dioxide forming more carbon monoxide. This might be the way the reaction goes. So this will be step one, and this will be step two. This reaction will have a delta H. This reaction will have a delta H. And if I sum up the delta H's, I will get the overall delta H for my reaction that produces carbon monoxide. Okay, I'm going to walk you through it. Now, a more real-life example is like a runners in a relay race. Some runners can go slow, some runners can go fast, but it doesn't matter because the total time for the runners is based on the sum of all of the runners in the race. It doesn't matter how one, re one runner goes as long as you add up the sum of all the runners to find their overall. So let's look at some examples to really understand how this is going to work. So here, pause the video, uh, write down these, all of these reactions, and I'll walk you through it. So here are three reactions. Okay? These three reactions are going to get added up to equal this overall reaction. So I'm going to put a line here to represent where my overall reaction is. So I need to get these three reactions to equal the overall. But you'll see a couple of things immediately. Um, the most important thing that you'll see is there is stuff up in these in, in these individual steps that isn't in the overall. For example, water, for example, water, um, oxygen, and hydrogen are all in these upper reactions, but they're not in the overall. Okay? So I'm going to list off a couple of steps for you, and you're going to write these down uh, as you go. So the first thing you need to do in order to get these three individual reactions to equal the overall reaction is step one, make sure everything is on the correct side. Okay, now what do I mean make sure everything's on the correct side? So, HCl is on the left. I want to make sure the HCl is on the left up above. I look at my overall, my individual reactions, and I notice, yes, HCl is on the left-hand side. Perfect. I want to make sure F2 is on the left-hand side. F2 is on the left-hand side. HF is on the right. HF is on the right. Cl2 is on the right and Cl2 is on the right. Okay, so my first step is taking care of, making sure that everything is on the correct side. Step number two is make sure I have the correct number of everything. Okay, so I look at HCl and I see that I only need two HCls, but up here I have four HCls. So how do you turn a four into, into a two? Simple, divide by two. So, if I divide this reaction by 2, I now have 2 HCl's. Now, if I divide one thing by 2, I have to divide the entire reaction by 2. So, this is a 1. So, 1 divided by 2 is now a half. My H2O becomes a 1. And my Cl2 becomes a 1. Now, a continuation, step 3 is, whatever you do to the reaction, you must do to the delta H. So, if I divided my reaction by 2, I'm going to divide my delta H by 2 as well. And I continue down the line. So I look at F2. And I say, okay, well, there's only one F2 needed in the overall, but I have a half up here. Well, how do I turn a half into a whole? I multiply by 2. So I multiply everything here by 2. Well, a half times 2 is 1. A half times 2 is 1. And 1 times 2 is 2. And, of course, I multiply my delta H by 2. I look for my HF. I need two HFs. Oh, look at that. I now have two HFs. I need one Cl2, and I have one Cl2. Excellent. So again, step one was make sure everything's on the correct hand side. Step two is make sure I have the correct number of everything. Step three, whatever I do to my chemical reaction, I must do to the delta H. Step four is 
cancel out anything that's on both sides of the chemical reaction and is not needed in the overall reaction. Okay, so again, I noticed that those H2s, O2s, and H2Os are present in these reactions, but they're not in the overall. So, what I need to do is I need to get the H2s to be opposite to each other, meaning some on the left and some on the right of the arrow. Same thing with the O2s and same thing with the H2Os. Okay, since all my reactions are on the correct side, I got to see if they will cancel out. So, notice that I have H2Os on the right and H2Os on the right, but no H2Os on the left anywhere. Well, let's get the H2Os to be on opposite sides. The way I do that is I flip the chemical reaction over. So I cross out the old, and I'm going to flip this one. And the reason I'm flipping this one versus flipping the first one is because if I flip the first one, it's going to put my Cl2s on the wrong side and my HCls on the wrong side. And that's not going to help me. Now, whatever I do to the, delta, the reaction, I do to the delta H. So if I flip the reaction, I must flip the sign of delta H. And so I'm going to multiply by a negative 1, because regardless of what the sign is here, the negative 1 will automatically flip the sign for me. Now, that will allow my H2Os to cancel out. My H2s, I have one H2 on the left and one H2 on the right, half of an O2 on the right and half of an O2 on the left. Everything will now cancel. And now that everything, now that I have finally balanced everything out and everything's going to cancel, now I go through and I cross out everything that's on opposite sides. And I circle what's left over so that I can easily see it. I'm a big fan of identifying what I have. Now I add everything up and make sure that it equals my overall. Ignoring the fact that it might be out of order, does that add up? Yes, it does. So now what I do is I add up my delta H's. Now notice, I have not touched a calculator yet. I've done all my work right here on the right-hand side, just indicating what I should be doing later. So the delta H of my reaction is equal to the delta H from reaction 1 over 1, uh, I'm sorry, divided by 2, plus, because it's sum, 2 times the delta H of reaction 2, plus negative 1 times the delta H for reaction 3. Pull out my handy-dandy calculator. My delta H of reaction 1 is minus 202.4 divided by 2 plus 2 times negative 600 plus negative 1 times negative 285.8. Negative 1015.4. So the delta H for my reaction equals negative 1015.4 kilojoules. I do not modify the sig figs here because it was addition all the way through. So I keep it to whatever it was. Now again, now why do I touch I don't touch my calculator? Remember what I tell you, when every time you touch your calculator, you have the chance of making a mistake. If each time you did this, you potentially have four errors that could occur in this reaction uh, in this problem yet by only touching the calculator once I've eliminated my chance for mistake down to one so that's a big when you talk about partial credits okay let's do some more examples given that these two reactions determine the enthalpy change for the decomposition reaction below okay so this one this reaction down here is my overall reaction and I've got to get my top reactions to to work out so again, step one is make sure everything's on the correct side. So I look, I need SO3s on the left, but SO3s are on the right. In order to get things on the, to, on the opposite side, I flip them. Whatever I do to my reaction, I must do to my delta H as well. So I multiply by negative one. My SO2s need to be on the right. They are on the right. My O2s need to be on the right. And my O2s, oops, on both sides, so I'm going to not deal with them for a second because they may work themselves out at the end. Now I need to check to make sure everything's on the correct side. So two SO, I'm sorry, uh, I need to make sure I have the correct number of everything. So I need two SO3s, but I only have one. So I'm going to multiply everything in this reaction 
by 2. And when I multiply 3 halves by 2, I get 3. Now this ends up becoming multiplied by a negative 2. I need two SO2s, but I only have one SO2. So again, I multiply everything by 2. And I'm not going to do with the oxygens. And now I look to see if anything can cancel out. I'm going to change my color again. Let's do purple. Okay, so I'm going to change my uh, I'm going to cancel everything that's on both sides of the arrow, things that are on the left side and the right side. So I notice that I have two S's on the left and two S's on the right, so those cancel. I have two O2's on the left, three O2's on the right. So these two are going to go away, and that's going to leave me with one O2 left behind. And look at that, that's exactly what I needed down here. And I circle everything that's left. And I add it up. Do my two reactions equal each other? Yes, they do. Okay, so now I add up for my delta H. The delta H of my reaction is equal to 2 times the delta H of reaction 1 plus negative 2 times the delta H for reaction 2. Pull out my calculator. 2 times negative 296.8 plus negative 2 times negative 395.6 is 197.6. 197.6 kilojoules per mole. And the reason it's kilojoules per mole this time is because that is what the units are up here. Okay, so I'm just keeping the same units as what's given in the problem. Let's see another. Okay. Aluminum reacts vigorously with many oxidizing agents. For example, here are two simple reactions. Use this information to determine the enthalpy of formation of magnesium, um, manganese dioxide. Okay, there's something very important going on in this problem. Notice that in the other previous problems, they gave me the overall reaction. But in this one, they didn't. Well, there's something, a very important phrase here that they use which tells me what's going on. And that is the enthalpy of formation. Formation reaction means elements combine together to form a compound. Okay? So, what elements make up manganese dioxide? Well, Mn and O2 make up manganese dioxide. So this is my formation reaction. And of course I would balance it, but it's already balanced. So this is my formation reaction. So this means that's my overall reaction. So again, the formation reaction means the elements combine together to form one compound. It's a composition reaction. So now, let's work on our, pro our steps to get them to equal the overall. Manganese, I need manganese on the left hand side. So I can I flip this bottom reaction. And when I do that, I multiply by a negative one. Okay. I now have my manganese on the left, my manganese dioxide's on the right, and I have my oxygen's already on the left. Now, I only want one manganese, so I'm going to divide this reaction by 3, and I'm going to change my color again. When I do that, this becomes 2 thirds, oops, this becomes 4 thirds, and this becomes a 1, and I divided my reaction by 3. And I only need one oxygen, but I have three oxygen, so again, I divide everything by 3, this becomes a 1. This becomes a two-thirds, and again, I divide my reaction by three, and I have one manganese dioxide, and now I have one manganese dioxide. Now I cancel out anything that's on both sides of the arrow. Four-thirds four of aluminum on the left, four-thirds aluminum on the right. That goes away, that goes away. Two-thirds of an aluminum dioxide, um, Al2O3 on the left, two-thirds of an Al2O3 on the right, and I circle Ha -ha. I circle everything that's left over, and I add it up, and I get manganese plus oxygen yields manganese dioxide, which is the exact same. So my delta H of my reaction is equal to the delta H of reaction 1 divided by 3 
plus the opposite sign of delta H of reaction 2 divided by 3. Whip out the calculator, plug chug, here we go. We've got negative 3, 3, 5, 2 divided by 3 plus um, negative 1, 7, 9, 2 divided by a negative 3. I just incorporated the negative 1 into the 3 on the bottom. And I get negative 520, 520 kilojoules per mole. Okay? So these have been fairly simple.